Hi everyone, my name is Megan and today I'm going to be guiding you through the third installment of our virtual workshops as part of our Art Room Online initiative. Now today we are going to be making a lovely little octopus like this, although I might be doing them in a different colour. And um, This style of paper art that we're going to be doing is called quilling. Now quilling is very simple um, and really really fun and it's actually really relaxing I find which I think is important during this time. Um, but first of all before we get started I'm going to run through just our list of materials and things that we need um, to get the ball rolling. So this is a really good time actually if you want to um, pause the video or go through the materials list, pause it and then make sure you have everything you need before we get started. What I'm using today is just, this was a leftover packet of coloured card I had from another project that never got used and I thought now would be a great time to use it. You don't need coloured card, um, it doesn't even need to be card. Any sort of paper, newspaper, printer paper, old wrapping paper, anything is possible. As long as you can cut it up into little strips, you can use it. Now, as you can see here, all I have done in a very unfussy manner is just taking a sheet of each of the colours I wanted. I don't even know if we're going to get to use all the colours, but better shape than sorry. And just cut them up into these little strips. You don't need to be too precious about it, as long as they're all roughly the same length and width, it's fine. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, if you Google, you know, quilling designs or quilling designs for kids, you can find loads of stuff where you actually use different, you know, shorter lengths of card, longer lengths of card to make all these little different shapes. Um, what I'm also going to be using is masking tape, which is really handy for securing the quills together. You can actually see here, I've masked all the little tentacles together and then all I did was get a little pink marker to colour it in so it blended a wee bit better. So masking tape's really handy for that because it's not quite as sticky as sellotape so it doesn't stick all to your fingers and it's really good for just adhering to the card. And um, I am also using some scissors Please make sure those are grown up around if you're going to be using scissors. I'm also going to be using a glue gun. Now the only reason I'm using a glue gun, you don't need one, is because I don't have any glue sticks. And obviously we're trying to avoid going out unnecessarily, so I thought I would just use what I had on hand. Um, because I have super glue, but it's far, far too fiddly and really messy. So I think that's pretty much everything you need. Also I've got some water and some juice, just because I like to stay hydrated while I'm having fun. So let's get to it. Okay, so unfortunately I have had to cut my head off in order to get my whole workspace in. Um, but as you can see, I've got masking tape, I've got scissors, pencil is really, while you don't necessarily need one, it's really handy if you want to sketch out where you want your octopus to go. And also for curling the ends of some of the card, it can be better than the scissors. Now, as you can see, I've gone with this sort of blue purple color, um, just to shape things up a bit and make this one slightly different from the one that we're basing it on. And I've got this one to hand as well to sort of guide me through. And then I thought it would be fun to make a little orange octopus. Now, the only other thing we're gonna need is just two tiny bits of white paper and then um, a little black pen. But I've also got the pencil case here with all of my pens and stuff in it. So let's get started. So the first one that we're gonna do, these are all sort of the same size. You can use one or two actually, or mask and tape them together if needs be. So I'm just going to start off with two strips here and we're going to just get this pencil. And this is the sort of technique I was talking about earlier. If you've ever um, helped wrap presents for birthdays or around Christmas time for anybody. And um, if you've ever seen people get the ribbons that they tie in the presents, put them in a bow and then you get a pair of scissors and you, you just glide the scissors up across the ribbon and it springs back and do a beautiful little curl. So this is a similar technique. It's also one of the reasons why I think paper is actually better than card for this because it's, you know, it's lighter, it doesn't have as much thickness to it. So I'm going to give this a go with the scissors here and see if that's any better. So please get a grown up to do this for you. You can't be sitting playing with open scissors yourself. Oh jeepers. Hold on, let me try it the way. I had no problems doing this yesterday of course. There we go, that's a bit better. So you're just pulling it through and keeping it nice and taut. And as you can see, that's given us a lovely little curly boy. Now I'm actually gonna do it to the two of these and then maybe tape them together to make one sort of big swirl for the head. Oh, 
Mm. Lovely. All right, I'm gonna get a tiny bit of masking tape. If I can find the end of it. Oh, jeepers. Why is this always so hard? There we go. And I'm just gonna get my scissors and just cut a little teeny strip here. Just like that. And then I'm going to connect these two together. Just gonna go with whatever bit these bits seem sort of same size. And then just hold them one on top of the other like that. like that and there we go and now it means we've got an even bigger curly bit like so now you can wind these tighter a handy trick i found to do that is just to sort of hold this part here quite loosely between your thumb and finger and then using your other thumb and finger just you want to pull it like that so it tightens right round and this will give you a much tighter coil and then you just want to take your forefinger and thumb and just roll it like that in between your fingers and you can use a comb you can use both hands to do this and just roll 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 rolling rolling i won't make you all enjoy my singing but we are rolling that's what we're doing and just keep going just keep going just keep going 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 <laughs> you don't just have to do swirls they're just this the shape that works best for this octopus but if as i said before you know if you want to look up quilling oh there we go look it's really tight um and then And then we can just pull it back out but this gives us you know a lot more whereas before all the curves were sort of concentrated on the edge now you can you know pull them out and just it gives you a bit more control over the size of it it's a wee bit foodery but it is really fun i find okay Now I'm just going to sit this on here for the meantime. It's a little bit smaller than the one I was using before, so I might actually just keep loosening it. And then get the very end and actually Force that in a wee bit tighter so you just put like a little tiny flick into it and then roll 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 as you can see it does take it does take a wee while but you know i think it's fun and you can keep adding more stuff to it you know as you can see i just drew those bubbles onto the pen but there's nothing stopping you making little quill bubbles there are so many different ways you can do this. Okay, and then, oh, jeepers, I dropped it. Now that's far better. So as you can see here, you know, just sort of keep. Keep sort of fiddling with it. And oh, there we go. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> I'm just gonna wash my hands and we'll get right back to it. Okay, that is me back. <coughs> I'm just gonna loosen this a little bit again. 
just to, so it sort of gets to the right size and shape. I'm a little bit fluffy about this in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> so I'm sort of happy enough with that. So I'm going to sit him there. Now the way I have done all of these little tentacles, if you can hear snorting in the background, that's my dog, um, is just sort of go from the middle roughly and fold up just very loosely like so and then you want to take each end and work in from the middle oh once again please get a grown-up to help you with this just there and then the other end so we've got two tentacles for the price of one And then they don't necessarily have to be 100% even, you know, you could have, for example, this one at the top, as you can see, this side is much longer than that side and it still looks great. The only other thing I do then is just fold the edges in a very tiny bit, just, you know, like a little millimeter or two, and then roll that right down like so. And look. It's curly. Fantastic. And as you can see, because it's just, you know, paper, it's so, you know, it's, it's, it's so nice to see things that take shape straight away. Instead of you having to sit for ages figuring out when it's going to look like something, you know? No. that end and they're sort of like that and then we can just fit them in you know we can sort of sit everything like this and that'll be his first two little tentacles <coughs> so hold on to that or these could be the bottom ones maybe maybe we'll keep those at the bottom ones that's the thing, before you glue anything down, it doesn't really matter. I also quite like the way this one, see the way it sort of sits up a little bit? So it gives it a little funky you know, dimension when it's on the paper. I think I might actually do this as well. And then we'll see where we get to. Um, now the reason I keep doing this with the scissors to give it that initial curl is that I found the card actually curls much better once you've done this because the first time I was making these, I'm not sure if you can see up close, but see like here and here, you can see the way it, it doesn't really curl it. It's very angular. Um, that's because I just got the straight bit of card and started folding it and it kind of goes like a little triangle, whereas this sort of loosens the shape of it up and allows it to you know curl round much better. So just fold this down like that and keep folding and then start rolling and I just find that giving it a little sort of flick with the scissors beforehand prevents all that horrible angles and the card actually can separate and stuff if you're not careful so I just think this bit works much better, but it does need me a bit more help from a grown up, but that's never a bad thing. And then we'll just unfold this bad boy right out. And again. And if at any point you want to pause the video and get a snack or something, go on ahead. Um, that is another curly bit, so we'll leave that there. Put that over that way. And then we'll get this one. And then I think, yeah, maybe we'll just curl it sort of from this end. There we go. Not right to the end just to give it a little bit of length. And same again. 
And it's gonna pull down. Now I have used colored paper from the background, but if you have, you know, standard printer paper, there's nothing to stop you coloring it in and creating, you know, a bit of art for your background. That would come out really nice. And then you can just stick your coloring to the top of it. You know, you could draw some bubbles like I did in this one, or you could draw waves or seaweed or all sorts. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And then we'll just get on, do that. There we go. So that's one and Ooh, that one curled out a bit. That's actually quite comfy. But I'm gonna pop it back in. Um and then as you can see there's his two little curly tentacles. I might actually now see if I'm gonna just change the direction here. See if, for example, like there now, when I thought that was just a bit too tight because we're curling it in this way, if you just push up from underneath with your thumb like that, that will reduce the curl drastically. So if you've curled it in too tight, maybe for example, like I did, you can just do that. And then that means, let's see, you've got two completely separate tentacles that we can just secure, you know, that sort of way. Um, so those two can connect together. And then, I might actually just curl less of the edges. So let's do that again. And this side. I mean, if you make any mistakes, it doesn't matter. It's just paper. You can just start again. Curl that in again. I just thought, you know, this was something a little bit different. And a lot of, you know, painting and stuff can be very daunting if you know you're not confident with it or if you haven't done it before whereas you know this is only the second time I've ever done this so sorry third time I've ever done it you know this one I made this was my first go at quilling ever so you know it's so easy to make something that actually looks respectable there's that one Tentacles. Although these ones are, oh, we can put them in at the top of that. There we go. So it's the good thing about not gluing things down straight away is that you can change your mind about what you want things or where you want them to go. You know, like you could put these ones down here, maybe the bottom, and we will put them up the way. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we feel. <clears throat> <clears throat> Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna get this one and just sort of do the same again. See, I feel like this is sort of repetitive enough to be like therapeutic, but not repetitive enough to be boring. Or at least I hope it's not boring. Just once you get the hang of rolling this in between your fingers, it's great. Okay, and then down, pull it back out like there's one little swirly. And you can always like bend these in the middle a bit, you know, if you want them to sort of dip down underneath. So for example, if I want 
this one on the top, and then these ones under, all I'd have to do is bend it like that. See? And I'll just put those there. And I think that's enough to sort of get us going here. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two because I'm reasonably happy with what way they're sitting and how they sit compared to the octopus head. So <clears throat> back in with the masking tape. And once again, just pull it up a tiny, tiny bit. You can rip it across, but I'm terrible at that. I always manage to rip the wrong length or size or something, you know. Cut that bit. And then we're just gonna pinch those where we want them. Put the masking tape across the bottom like so. Oh, as you can see, that's not very straight, but it doesn't really matter. And then just in like that. Now I'm gonna get an orange marker. You can use orange highlighters, actually, grits. The good thing about this um, paper being quite bright. And then I'm just gonna color in the top of it just to help the it blend in a bit like so it doesn't have to be particularly artistically done and just make sure you get see the side is where you want to get because that's where you can you know really see the tape and it just sort of makes it look more like one whole piece as opposed to a few bits stuck together Now you don't have to use marker, you could use an orange highlighter, you could use an orange colouring pencil. I mean if you really wanted to you could use paint but I feel like that would be very fiddly and take a lot longer. And that pink, that orange, sorry, isn't as good a match as the pink was. But anyway, I wonder would that yellow be any better. Hmm, we'll find out. So that's those two connected together like that. I want to pull this down a bit, maybe, maybe just a little. And then the head will go on like so. So once again, you know what? I probably could have just taped them all together, but never mind. Just get one more bit of tape. stuck in is great for learning new things, isn't it? Perfect time to pick up a new skill or something is when you're bored. <laughs> As I'm sure a lot of kitty winks are when they're not being homeschooled. I'm gonna hold it like that and then I'm gonna actually lift the head up, pop it across the inside like that there, see? And then we're just going to fold underneath. They actually should have done that before I colored it in, but oh well. And then I'm going to make the rest work any better. Oh, nah, maybe. Oh, that is better, isn't it? Which is wild because it's a yellow marker. But I mean, yellow and orange are very similar, aren't they? I can never tell if this jumper is yellow or orange. I thought it was yellow, but apparently it's not. Okay. And we're back again. So now we've got the head and the first sort of four tentacles attached. Obviously an octopus has eight. So that means we've got four more to put on. <clears throat> now at this stage, it is really just a case of holding things together, find that way you like them. Oh, this is gonna be some extravagant tentacles, isn't it? They're really fun. Oh dear, I don't know. Oh well. So I am going to 
to probably tape these together at the same time, maybe. We'll see how it goes. Get the masking tape again. those two there. Oh, the head's gone away. Oh. So that's one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. What do you think? How does that look? Yeah? Right, let's go. Put it there. So don't worry about it, I'll just show the tops down individually, but so that's how we're looking at the minute. And I'm going to once again come back in with the little marker. Oh that bit's not sticking. Keepers. I wonder is it not sticking? Oh no! I wonder is it not sticking because of the <coughs> the marker that's already on it. Well, that one has just given up and fallen out. So we're gonna have to tape him in as well. So we'll just pull all that through. But sure, you know, mistakes happen. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's them all accounted for. Um, yet you can bend these down and round if you're like, oh, they look very tightly packed together, you know, that sort of way. Um, yeah, so back in with the marker, I'm gonna use the orange on the edge here, just so it blends that wee bit better. And then, Oh my goodness, that one just doesn't want to stay in at all, does it? Hmm. I might have to actually glue it in separately, which would not be fun, but... Always learning. I definitely should have taped them on at the same time. Egypt. Oh well. No. Okay, so now we have everything sort of stuck together with masking tape. I have then gone and got just a little bit of scrap paper and I'm just going to cut out two little eyes for our octopus. I kind of want to pull his head out so it's a bit bigger. This is one of the great things about this is that you know you can, especially if you're gluing, if you're gluing this down with glue stick, you can just glue all over the actual paper and then you can pull this out and press down if you think it's too tight or if you want it bigger and the glue will actually hold it apart. So you could end up with, you know, a really big octopus head if that was what you wanted. I think I do actually want this to be bigger. Let's see. Oh, still small. Just gonna have to pull it right out and then let it spring back in. Still too big. Oh, my leg's falling out again. Oh, goodness. So definitely, if you've got two separate legs, tape them in individually. Do not just try and do what I did, which was tape them in together. I'm gonna have to probably glue them down separately, but that's no biggie. So I'm going to just pull this all out a bit. like that maybe round up yeah there we go that's much better we'll probably pull out another wee bit pop those back in just try and keep it flat and then yeah so I'm gonna cut two little eyes just gonna get my pencil now the thing about octopus eyes is that they have weird pupils their pupils are sort of flat, almost like a goat or a horse. So they're kind of like this. 
obviously you don't have to be very exact, but I'm just gonna get a little black marker, fill in the pupils, which is what I did with the first octopus I made. I then tried to make a jellyfish, but that did not go according to plan at all. Okay, so they are like this. And then these pencil lines, I'm just gonna use those as a guide to cut these out. And if you have a glue stick, you can just glue these straight on. I am going to probably just double up a bit of masking tape because I don't really wanna put glue, any hot glue anywhere near my fingers. The only other thing I'm gonna get, which I didn't mention at the start in the materials list, so sincere apologies about that, is that I have a little white pen, but you could definitely just use Tipex or a white marker. Um, and this is what I've been using to draw these little bubbles. So I'm gonna draw some more in with this octopus. I had to get different scissors because those ones are very bulky for cutting out the little eyes. Oh no. The dogs are upset at something. And then we're just gonna, ooh, very nice. Oh dear, they fell in the middle. <laughs> Hold on, I will get, where is it? Get the masking tape. And then this is really easy if you just cut off the masking tape and then just kind of roll it up just like how we've been doing with the paper but roll it up so the sticky side is on the outside then oh my goodness you can stick it to the eye like so and then stick the eye down Oh my goodness, it's facing the wrong way. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Hold on. So, try with this one. Oh jeepers, I am having issues. This is what people call technical difficulties. Is this what they mean? Okay, right, let's go. <gasps> there we go. No, right, I'm gonna hold those legs because they don't, oh deer they do not want to cooperate but here is the little octopus so far he's got much more sprawly arms than the last one but i quite like him so i am going to get my glue gun and start gluing this down but before that i'm actually going to draw a few little bubbles so i'm going to actually move Mr. Octopus out of the way and I'm going to show you how I draw my bubbles. Now, they're really simple. I only came up with the way to do this the other day, but essentially all you do is, and I hope you can see this okay because I'm left-handed, is it's literally just a circle and you just kind of make a teardrop shape and then you just draw round and round loads of lines and then you're just doing a little twirly boy here you know you sort of make them into little they're almost I don't want to say the word scribbly but they are kind of scribbly but see from a distance they look like really good bubbles so that's just what I've been doing it's just sort of a circle with a teardrop in it now this pen when it works it's great but it doesn't always work. It's like a paint pen. It's really annoying. You could use Tipex actually, it would be great for this. Um, any sort of white marker, white paint. If you've got a little skinny toothbrush. No, sorry, not toothbrush, paintbrush. Oh my goodness, my head's away. And then you can just draw as many bubbles as you want. They're really fun. And you can draw like circles within the bubbles and it's just, it's, it's really fun. So I am just going to get my glue gun. Might have to move stations. 
Okay, so I've got set up for gluing. Now, if you are using a glue stick, all you need to do is just lift your little octopus up. Don't drop any loose legs. <laughs> and just glue all over the area that you want to stick them on. Then very gently set them down and just really light pressure. Just press all the little ends, all the legs, his head, the little mask and joints. Press all that down and just leave it to dry. And then you can decorate the rest of the page if you haven't decorated it beforehand. But obviously I can't do that because I have no glue sticks. So what I am going to do is very gently, very carefully, get my glue gun, click the bottom bit in. Going to put just a bit of glue along here. This is just along the little masking tape joint. Oh, deepers, not too much. And that's where we're gonna start off. I'm gonna press him down there. Now, essentially, the way I try and figure out what way to glue is just to find any bits that aren't sitting flush, like this bit here, and just pop a wee bit of glue underneath. There, and then just use that sort of as an anchor to the card. So just sort of hold that down. Then, for example, see this one's lifting quite a bit, so just I'll pop some down here. Give that a wee press down. Another wee bit under here. The good thing about this as well is obviously, you know, if, for example, I did want to loosen the head out and glue it up a wee bit higher away, I could do that. But I think his head's fine. Push that in a wee bit. And then I might glue, just because this one is not secured in properly like the rest of them, I am going to glue this leg down. Not a leg, what is it? A tentacle. Okay, and just a wee pop there, and then maybe just a little bit. Oh goodness, someone's being very loud outside. Now I think that's pretty much it apart from my bubbles. I've left this to dry for a little bit. The only place I didn't glue down again was his head. I might glue it down again. But everywhere, else, oh actually, hmm. Maybe this wee leg. And pop a wee bit more glue onto these wee legs. That one. That one. There. Just hold it down. And then I will draw a few more wee bubbles in. But for the meantime, this is where we are currently. I'm going to move my little camera up here. So I'll just pop some bubbles on and then that's us.